Hi, Sean Coast Mesa R&D. Well, today we're going to talk a little bit about some old-style piston technology. Uh, we have a uh, piston rod assembly out of an old Buick or Pontiac or Oldsmobile, one of the three. And I wanted to show you how pistons have really changed. Um, if you take a look here, this piston has a slot going this way here and one down here. Um, it has the pin held in with a screw. Uh, it has four rings and it's just really clunky by today's standards and if you look over here on the other side it has another slot over here and the reason that they put these slots in here was so that the oil would creep back down here it would scrape down the cylinder wall and go on the inside of the piston back down to the crankcase the pin retention of course is done with a screw and we don't do that anymore because these were fairly low revving engines, they could get away with this. The piston pin itself is rather unique. It does have a hole going through where the screw screws right into the pin on this side. And then on this side here, we have a, a slot that's cut into the piston pin. Uh, that was for expansion. And this slot that we have right here was also meant for expansion because they ran the clearances a lot tighter on these things and they didn't have quite as much cam which means that this side of the piston is ground less than the size and you can kind of see that by the wear pattern where about only this much of the piston actually rides on the cylinder wall the rest of it just goes along for the ride the rings uh, are quite thick by today's standards I know in my race car I run uh, a one millimeter wide top compression ring with a 1.2 second ring and a 2.8 wide uh, oil ring. This one has eighth inch wide top and second ring and it has two styles of oil control rings. It has a three piece ring here, it has one piece ring down here and occasionally there would be a little expander that went behind here to help hold it out against the cylinder wall. So this is kind of like I say kind of clunky by today's standards. Now, back in the day when we, have, when we used to have to repair these things, the pistons would wear out. Not the pistons, but the ring, well, the piston itself, but actually the ring groove would wear out. And basically what you would have is you would have an issue, let's take a look at this one here, where the top ring would just wear itself out and you had a lot of extra clearance in there. Well, to deal with that, we would take and machine this top groove and add a spacer to the ring. Now, let's get the right one here. Here it is. The space would go in and take up the extra clearance that you machined out and give you the correct side clearance on the ring on the piston. That actually gave us the first gapless piston rings way back when. So, uh, Technology ahead of its time, eh, kind of, but we didn't know it at the time either. So that was one of the things we used to do. We put, like I said, put shims in here and cut these grooves. They made special machines for machining these grooves that were done by hand. You put it around here and you spin the thing around. It had a little cutter blade that would march in and cut the groove wider. That's all okay, um, but by today's standards, we just basically toss pistons and put something in. Plus the fact, these pistons were made out of a, a lesser alloy than what we have today. With the alloys that, <clears throat> that we're using today, uh, we don't have these wear problems like we did back in the old days. So this is just some information that you don't need to know, but at least it's a history lesson you, you do need to know about where we came from with some of these old style pistons. So, with that said, uh, hopefully you got a little bit out of this uh, little bit of a lesson here, and you'll understand what you see when you take some of these older engines apart, and you see all these spacers behind rings sometimes. Anyway, John Costa Mesa R&D, we'll see you soon.